All right. I was working on my directory just to improve some of the design and I ran into the dreaded limit with lovable, meaning unless I upgrade my plan, I cannot chat with it anymore. So what I'm going to do instead, because other people might be wondering how they can do this, is export my code so that I could work on it in cursor, which I already pay $20 a month for. So I figured I might as well go work on it in something I already paid for. Also, Cursor has a lot of advantages. I've run into a few limitations with Lovable, and I'm going to share those with you now. One thing is that Lovable only allows you to use Google Fonts, which Google Fonts is pretty extensive, but I have very specific fonts that I want to use for my directory, and I want to be able to import those font files. And you cannot import that into Lovable. There's also just some advantages of cursor, like the way that it responds when I want to make a change with the design. It's a lot more agile, I find, than Lovable is. So if you're running into a lot of frustrations with the way Lovable is formatting your directory, you should consider cursor and you'll see the differences now when I do a little bit of a demo. Our first step in exporting, I'm just going to update it and publish it so that this current version of my site is live on the web. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do, now that it's published, I'm going to press GitHub and press Transfer Project to GitHub. I already have an account on GitHub, but in case you don't, make sure you make an account on GitHub. It's free to do. GitHub is essentially, as I understand it, is for version control. So. It's a good thing to always have a copy of your code backed up on GitHub. Okay, so since I was already logged in, I could just press my account name and it says the project is connected to a new folder on GitHub and Lovable will commit changes to the main branch. So all I had to do was click that one thing and it's already uploaded to GitHub. I can go ahead and view it here um, just to confirm it's here. And as you can see, this is a private repository, which is what you probably want to have unless you want to make your repository, repository publicly available. Okay, so our next step is to open Cursor. If you haven't downloaded the app yet to your computer, go to cursor.com and follow the instructions for downloading the app to your computer. You're going to need this in order to open our project that we just connected to GitHub. So I'm going to press clone repo, clone from GitHub. And then there it showed up right away, my Market Finder Bay Area project. So all I have to do is press that. I'm going to select this particular folder on my computer as the destination where I want to store this repository. And so what it's doing is it's copying over all of the code files, the code base to my computer so that there's a copy stored locally on my computer. So I'm going to press open and this is what will open up. It's a black screen, which might be a little bit confusing. So the first thing I'm going to do over here on the right where it says agent install all necessary dependencies. And right off the bat, it can see that this is a TypeScript project using Beat, Tailwind, CSS, and Supabase, which is all correct. Um, I'm going to run the command npm install over here on the agent. And it says there's a dep dependency conflict, so it will know how to resolve that. I'm going to run that command as well. Now, what's intimidating about cursor versus lovable is you're seeing all of the code base, which might scare you, but this is what was under the hood anyways within lovable. And what you can do in order to actually see the project as you're editing it the way you can in lovable, you'll go to terminal, new terminal, and you'll press, you'll type in npm run dev and then press enter and from here it's powering up um, a local host server so that you can press command click and it will open a preview on your computer so here you can see is local host 80 80 in my case this is our directory right here this is in my chrome browser and so as I make any updates within Cursor, 
they will show in real time the way that they do in Lovable here on my development server viewer, just the way that it was working in Lovable. Okay. One difference though is anytime I make changes now in cursor, it's not going to automatically update my site the way Lovable was updating my site every time I pressed update. So you're going to have to connect another tool in order to deploy your new code base and any updates you make to your code base. I am going to use Vercel for this. So go ahead and make a, an account on Vercel. I already have one for a lot of my projects and I'm just going to press import git repository. Um, I'll name it Bay Area Farmers Markets and framework preset v that looks good and I'm going to press oh here is where you can put in environmental variables which I will need to do um what this is is all of your keys from superbase in order to find those keys you go to superbase configuration and then press data a api I'm not going to show you mine because obviously I don't want to expose my keys, but that's where you would find them. Now, once you have entered in your API keys from Superbase, you can press deploy. Okay, I got a whole bunch of errors when I just deployed. So what I do is I copy these and then I bring them into cursor to try to understand why I'm getting all of these errors for deploying. And what I'll do is I'll just paste that into the chat, press enter and it will tell me what the issues are. I put in that error and it understood why the deployment is failing on Vercel. And so it updated our code here. And so I'm gonna press the check mark. Um, and what that did was it corrected our package.json. But what we need to do now is commit those changes to GitHub. So if you go to this icon here in the top left, what you're going to want to do is press commit, press yes to stage those changes to commit them to GitHub. And I'm going to say here, you put a little note for what you're changing. Changed, whoops, package lock. So it started writing it for me. So I could just press tab and I'll press up here. There's a check box, accept commit message. And then we'll press push one commits to origin main. We'll press OK, and I believe the changes have been made. So I'm going to go back to Vercel. Here in Vercel, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to press Import. I'll just keep the project name the same this time, and I'll press Deploy. I just want to check and see if it does successfully deploy it, which it looks like it's going to. Um, I will have to go back in and re-enter environment variables because it didn't save them the last time because the deployment wasn't successful. Great. It says, I just deployed a new project to low-hanging fruit. I can see it right there. And now that we have it on Vercel, I'm actually going to reconnect my domain here on Vercel. So in order to do that, here's my domain right now. I'll push it into production. I'll press add domain. It's going to add both www.bayareafarmersmarkets and without www. Configure automatically. I'm going to press authorize, authorize and delete conflicts. So it's basically removing from Lovable and it's going to now set it up with Vercel. Great. So it worked here. I'm going to press configure automatically for the www dot. I'm going to authorize it again, authorize and delete conflicts. Okay. So now our domain is and our entire project has moved from Lovable over to Cursor and it's deployed through Vercel. I do use the paid version of Vercel, but you do get up to, I believe, two projects on Vercel for free up to a certain amount. So you can always start on the, on the free plan for Vercel and as you scale, you might need to eventually pay for it. So you can check out pricing there. Don't forget to add in your environment variables because you're going to need to deploy your site with environment variables, meaning your Superbase API key. You have the Resend API key, the Mapbox API key. 
we'll need all of those in order to properly deploy our website. If you have any questions about your situation specifically, don't hesitate to ask Cursor about your environment variables and what you need to put on Mercel. But be careful about having a .env file with your environment variables within Cursor because you don't want to expose these and upload them to GitHub. So for further for clarification on your unique situation with that, I would encourage you to have a discussion with your agent within Cursor. Now, one last thing to keep in mind, you'll want to deploy directly from Cursor, most likely. So in order to do that, you want to make sure you have Vercel CLI installed, which is npm install dash g space Vercel. So I'm going to run that command in my terminal by just pressing run here. And I can see in the terminal, this little animation is happening. So it is installing it. And then I can run Vercel. Anytime that I do want to deploy my code base, I can do it directly from the terminal by typing Vercel dash dash P-R-O-D as in production, and then just press enter. And it says set up and deploy. I'm going to Press Y, enter. Which scope should contain your project? Low-hanging fruit? Yes. Link it? Yes. So it found my project. So now it's uploading and it's building it for production. But before you ever commit or, or sorry, deploy to Vercel, definitely make sure you have double-checked that everything, all the changes you've made actually do build. And the way you do that is by typing in npm run build. And if this is successful for building it for production, then you should be good to go in deploying it to production. I always get messages like this that are kind of notes or updates that you should do, but since they're not mission critical, you can kind of ignore them, but you might want to figure out what it's for. Like this one is about browser data and I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm ignoring it for right now until it really becomes a problem. But yeah, this built successfully, built in 21 seconds, 41.43 seconds. So I should have done that before I pushed this into production, but I did want to just show you what commands you're going to be using from the terminal. And if you forget these, by the way, which when I was first starting out, I forgot all these all the time, I would just ask the composer how I can deploy things to production or how I can test a build. And it would write the commands for me and I could just run it directly from the agent on the side over here. I might have said composer or agent, and those are the same thing because it used to be called composer, the thing on the right. I think they renamed it now to agent. And I'm sure they might have an, another new name for it. But also I wanted to mention as we're here in Cursor, this basically acts the same way the lovable agent does or the lovable chat. Except for it's a bit more advanced. You can start a new thread here, which I think is good when you're starting a new topic. I always start a new chat. So if something, if I might for example, I might be editing my hero section and then I might want to edit the directory. And those are two really independent topics. So I'll start a new chat because otherwise it'll take maybe some of the things that I've referenced about changing in the header into the conversation for the directories. And I don't always want that. Sometimes I want them to be extremely separate and kind of start with a fresh slate. You'll start to pick up on the quirks. There's no really good way of explaining this until actually using it, but as you use it more and more, you'll understand how you want to use it personally as well. And if you need a chat history, this is what this icon's for. And sometimes that's good because you want to reference an old chat. So down here in the composer or the agent, you can add context here. Anytime you are, you can reference a past chat, for example. You can reference parts of the code or different files and folders you have. So for example, I can do the hero section. So our hero section source components. Yeah, .tsx that comes up. Um, 
this is actually weird. There's two hero sections. So I'm going to have to look into why that is and figure out which one is the active one. I can actually ask that right now. I'll tag both of them and I'll say, please explain why I have two hero sections and what the difference is. Okay, it looks like there's an accidental duplication during development. So this is definitely a drawback of using AI is duplication, but this is a good way to clean it up and look through your code. So I'm going to say, please delete the version in components hero section okay so i'm gonna press accept there and it has deleted that file for me so yeah it truly looked like that was just a duplicate a duplicate so now um i can only tag the other hero section moving forward as i want to edit different sections that's how you can add context to your agent if you do get to a point where you feel comfortable editing your code granularly, and say I wanted to add, say I wanted to edit text in my nav bar. Like right now, it says Bay Area Farmers Market Directory. Um, you'll notice you can't actually type and edit that text in this mode. If you come down to the bottom bar here, it says Normal, and if you press that. Um, and you keep pressing it, it says Vim disabled. And you're going to want Vim disabled if you want to add in actual characters. Um, I'm not going to add anything right there now because I don't actually need to edit it. But that's how you can make specific changes. And you might want to lock it again so that you don't accidentally make changes again in the future because it'll be easy to just accidentally delete code. So keep that in mind. But that's how you'd be able to edit specific copy and that's always good to edit to make little copy edits here and there just through using the text editor instead of having your agent update it for you because then you're running up a chat and you only have so many credits okay well that is a crash course in setting up cursor and now we have completely moved on from lovable and we're starting from our last point in lovable with our code base here in cursor and i'm going to continue to work on it and add some images maybe upload some fonts and really start to customize the directory here in cursor what's amazing about cursor is that it has built-in help via the agent anytime i came across a question or didn't know how to do something i would just ask for a step-by-step -step instruction on on how to do something within cursor and that's how i became comfortable using the program okay good luck with cursor if you are using cursor you've unlocked the next step in your journey as an ai coder and i'll see you in the next video